Monetary policy is another type of demand side policy which has got three branches to it. Monetary, monetary policy can involve manipulating interest rates, it can involve manipulating the money supply in the economy, and it can involve manipulating the exchange rate in the economy. All three branches you need to know and need to understand, but especially interest rates. Interest rates is the big daddy of monetary policy. Demand side policy, yes, but as fiscal policy, it also has got an aggregate supply link. So, when we consider monetary policy, we can have, again, expansionary monetary policy, and we can have contractionary monetary policy. Expansionary monetary policy is any monetary policy that increases aggregate demand, whereas contractionary policy is any monetary policy that reduces aggregate demand. So, a reduction in interest rates, an increase in the money supply, a reduction in the exchange rate, all will increase aggregate demand. All will shift it to the right, they are all examples of expansionary monetary policy. Vice versa would be examples of contractionary fiscal policy. So let's isolate interest rates because they very much are the big daddy. We'll also look at money supply and exchange rate. But interest rates very simply define as the cost of borrowing. Interest rates are very simply the price of money. The cost of borrowing money and the rate of return on savings. So uh, when interest rates are reduced, the cost of borrowing reduces and the rate of return on saving decreases as well. You need to be able to start by explaining that. You need to show your understanding what interest rates mean. When interest rates fall, these two things happen. There is a double-edged coin when it comes to interest rates. Yes, they affect the cost of borrowing, but it also affects the rate of return on saving. You must mention both of those in your exam to score, otherwise you're not going to score fully. All right? But interest rates affect so many different things. Interest rates can affect the demand for loans. A reduction in interest rates will increase the demand for loans because it's now cheaper to borrow money, increasing the demand for loans. A reduction in interest rates will reduce the incentive to save because now the rate of return on saving reduces. So people are going to think, well, why save my money if I'm not going to get much interest on it? I'd rather just spend it instead. It in affects discretionary income. Discretionary income is just the income left after your taxes and after your key bills. So your discretionary income um, if you have a mortgage, it is affected by interest rates. So during the deep recession in 2008 to 2010, interest rates were at 0.5% for a long, long period of time. And those with mortgages benefited massively because the interest rates that they had to pay on their mortgage, the interest repayments, plummeted, which meant that they actually had more income each month. So it affects them too. It affects the real incomes of those with savings. So if interest rates fall again, People with savings are going to get less of a return, which reduces their overall incomes. It affects the demand for housing, because as we know, most people buy houses in, in the UK and in most major Western economies. They buy houses um, by taking out a mortgage, taking out a loan on the house. And what they do each month, they pay back um, interest um, from, uh, they pay back interest each month uh, that actually pays back the mortgage. So. Uh, if interest rates are very low, it's going to potentially increase the demand for houses because now the interest repayment on mortgages is actually very low. So it incentivizes people to buy houses, which increases the demand for houses, increases house prices. So there's another impact on low interest rates. But it also will affect the exchange rate. If you don't understand that, watch my video on exchange rate uh, changes for you to understand how interest rates can also affect the exchange rate. <clears throat> very simply, whatever happens to interest rates, the same will happen to the exchange rate. So if interest rates fall, the exchange rate is also going to fall. The simple reason is because hot money flows. Hot money will leave the economy, in this case let's say the UK, and therefore the value of the pound is going to depreciate, the supply of the pound increases. So exchange rate will also change, and when the exchange rate changes, the effect on the trade performance will also, in this case, improve if the exchange rate weakens. Uh, net exports will increase, therefore increase in aggregate demand. If you don't understand that, what's my video on exchange rate impacts to fully understand, okay? Right, so expansionary monetary policy are any monetary policies that will increase aggregate demand. So it could be a reduction, a reduction in interest rates will shift aggregate demand to the right. It might be an increase in the money supply, MS. An increase in the money supply will also increase aggregate demand, shift it to the right. It might be a reduction in the exchange rate. It's hard to manipulate the exchange rate. So manipulating the exchange rate is very much a minor branch of monetary policy. 
But in theory anyway, if I reduce the exchange rate, maybe by reducing interest rates, maybe by the government actually meddling in the foreign exchange market, even though governments these days don't have much control over monetary policy, if they did, they could meddle in the foreign exchange market and actually uh, allow their exchange rate to fall, increase the supply of their currency by buying more foreign currencies, um, causing the exchange rate to depreciate. But really, these two are the big ones, interest rates and money supply. And these are all examples of expansionary monetary policy where aggregate demand will shift to the right. Contractionary monetary policy is any monetary policy that will shift it to the left. So the opposite of these will shift it to the left and contract the economy, will reduce growth and increase unemployment. In this case, with expansionary monetary policy, growth increases, unemployment falls, there is some demand for inflationary pressure as well which might, as a result, worsen the current account position of the balance of payments. There is also a long-run aggregate supply impact. So yes, this is a demand-side policy, but there is also a supply-side impact here because a reduction in interest rates can also increase investment. In fact, that's something I missed out here, although you could say demand for loans. But firms also are impacted by lower interest rates. Their cost of borrowing for them falls, so they're more likely to borrow money to fund investment projects. If firms do that, they borrow money and they pour that money to the purchase of capital goods, that's going to increase investment. And an increase in investment, yes, will increase aggregate demand in the short run, but will also increase aggregate supply, long-run aggregate supply, as the quantity and quality of capital improves. So <clears throat> when interest rates fall, you can expect there to be an increase in investment too which will increase long-run aggregate supply. So don't forget the dual effect. You've got an increase in aggregate demand, yes, from a reduction in interest rates, but also an increase in long-run aggregate supply because of an increase in investment. Do not forget the dual effect. One final point I want to say is that <coughs> central banks tend to be in charge of monetary policy around the world. Central banks like the Bank of Japan, the Federal Reserve in America, the European Central Bank in the Eurozone, the Bank of England in the UK, these central banks are the, the people that control uh, what happens to monetary policy. This tends not to be in government control. Fiscal policy, yes it is. But monetary policy, no. It's in the hands of central banks. And within central banks, you have got committees who decide what's going to happen to interest rates. So the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England in the UK decide what's going to happen to interest rates each month. They don't just decide willy-nilly. They don't just say, you know, one month, it'll be great if interest rates fall. It'll be great if interest rates rise or whatever. No, that's just completely bogus. They actually target inflation when they set interest rates. So in the UK, the target rate of inflation is 2%. So what the Monetary Policy Committee do is when they feel inflation is getting out of control, maybe it's getting too high, like 5% or something, they can increase interest rates, reduce the level of aggregate demand in the economy and reduce inflation. And if inflation is too low, they can reduce interest rates, uh, increase aggregate demand, and cause more inflation to get inflation back to target. So they target inflation. And there are two main benefits of inflation targeting which you need to know as well. One is that it keeps inflation expectations under control, which means that random consumer consumption habits are not going to uh, cause sharp changes in inflation. So if you keep a track, keep a, a check on inflation expectations, consumers won't bring forward consumption expecting Shoot, uh, expect, expecting large increases in inflation. Therefore, inflation will always be kept under control. So inflation expectations keeps a lid on um, uh, you know, big changes in consumption, which we don't want to see. And at the same time, another benefit is that by targeting inflation and peop by people expecting inflation to be low, it allows the central bank to keep interest rates low. So if they manage to successfully target inflation, it means they've got more reason to keep interest rates down, which therefore will stimulate aggregate demand in the economy, maybe aggregate supply as well, which is good for the economy too. So there's monetary policy. My next video is going to look at the evaluation of monetary policy. Pay attention in that uh, to get the full essay plan. Thanks very much. See you then.